Welcome to By Faith with Frank Shelton. Frank speaks at the schoolhouse. The church house and has even been interviewed at the White House, but is most grateful to speak life into your house. Here's Frank Shelton. Hey, my friends, what an honor it is to be back with you. And I'm telling you, in these unique times, these turbulent times, these tough times, I got a word for you. You know, you may be down, discouraged, defeated, depressed, have a little bit of debt. Maybe you have a disease. Maybe you've been divorced. But if you're not dead, my God's not done. This episode of By Faith, we're not going to give you hype. We're given the hope of heaven. And people are looking for hope. People are looking for him. And people need to be looking towards heaven because soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. You know, it's been exciting just in the last two weeks. I've literally racked up 3,100 miles on my car. Um, we just finished a citywide crusade in Statesville, North Carolina, in Billy Graham's backyard. And this was a minor miracle. I was blessed to get in 15 public schools in five days. And I did a character message. People make choices. Choices make people. And I talked about three characteristics of a champion. They're confident, they're consistent, and they're compassionate. And you know what I'm learning across the country? There seems to be a lot of disrespect. There is a lot of respect these days. We're not respecting our parents. We don't respect the principal on college campuses. They don't respect the professor. Some people don't respect the police. Some people don't respect pastors. Half the country doesn't respect the president. And if I can be frank with you, it's probably because we don't respect the Prince of Peace. See, until we get right with God, we're going to be left out with everyone else. Most people don't even respect themselves. So what an honor it was to get in and we play by the school's rules by day, but we play by God's rules at night. I spoke to 9,000 students that week on a character message. And um, I have a statement, if you promote character, character will promote you. And what a blessing it was to connect with middle school kids and high school kids, black, white, rich, poor. I met one, uh, two sisters that blessed their heart were literally living out of a, a motel and um, our minister was able to bless them behind the scenes. And then I met two guys who had recently been living out of a car. And uh, we were able to gift brand new uh, shoes for them. And I want to thank our partners because God's in the soul business. You know, the most important part of the body is the S-O-U-L, but the most important part of the shoe is the S-O-L-E. Well, we played by the school's rules by day, but we played by God's rules at night. And the interesting thing is, is we did the tent revival and it was amazing. And the Lieutenant Governor spoke Tuesday and I preached Wednesday and we saw scores at the altar. Frank Shelton worked two decades on Capitol Hill and left by faith to preach the gospel in 2007. His family worked over 150 years in Washington protecting presidents and serving the congressional community. His ancestor carried President Abraham Lincoln from Ford's Theater and his maternal ancestor hand planted the cherry blossoms. Very few have as deep roots in DC. Urgency is one's minister's journey leading up to the lockdown in March, 2020. Buckle up. This book is a game changer for some and life changer for others. Available now at Amazon stores worldwide. For an autographed copy, visit frankshelton.com.
Hi, I'm Frank Shelton, and our television ministry by faith is reaching the world. But most importantly, God wants to reach you. You know, in a culture of fear, false evidence appearing real, I'm convinced faith is greater than fear, love is greater than hate, and I can't wait to speak life into you every week. Check the listings on this amazing network, and remember this, why live in fear when you can live by faith? God bless you. Praise the Lord, welcome back. For all my Florida friends, we're in the middle of preaching revival and I'd love to come to your city. All you have to do is go to frankshelton.com. Uh, CTN station manager, Paul Ladato sang, amazing, brought the house down and I preached a simple gospel message and we had a 10 year old get saved and I'm telling you, it never gets old. And if you believe America needs revival and we do, just ask your pastor and I'd love to come to your neck of the woods. But today I wanna to share a simple message, Luke chapter 10, verse 25. I wanna to talk to you about the Good Samaritan. The Bible says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying, Master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto them, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? And he answered and said, thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength with all thy mind and love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and clothes and wounded him and departed him, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, there was a Levite. And when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he helped him. He bound up his wounds, poured oil and wine, and set him on his own chest and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he departed and he took out two pieces of money and gave them to the host and said, take good care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest, if there's more, when I come back, I will pay. Which now of these three was the one that was the good Samaritan? And he said, go and show likewise mercy. And uh, I want to encourage you today, just like the good suggestion is not the great commandment. Today's about the good Samaritan. You know, the interesting thing is the Jewish and the Samaritans were like the Hatfields and McCoys. They were oil and water. It was like the Cowboys and Redskin fans. Just some things don't get along. But the interesting thing, when a Jew walked by this individual, his own didn't even help him. But there was a Samaritan. If you remember when Jesus was at the woman wounded at the well, the first thing she said is, you being a Jew aren't even supposed to talk to me. But God didn't even talk to her. He not only touched her, he transformed her. And here's the thing I've said for years, if you only hang out with folks who look like you and talk like you and dress like you and vote like you, you probably don't look like Jesus. The great apostle Paul was all things to all men to win some. There's a new Lieutenant governor in Virginia. She's an African-American female and her name is Winsome. I love that name. You're gonna win some and you're gonna lose some but we need to have a winsome personality if you're gonna win some people for Jesus. I mean, if it looks like we've been sucking on lemonades, we're not gonna look like the Lord. You know, we have won the game. You know, most of us are so depressed that we can't help deliver hurting people. And guys, some of us need a check up from the neck up. We need to take an internal inventory and we need to look out with eyes like the Lord, but have a heart of compassion. I wanna take us back to basics. My former boss is seven foot two, and he played for UCLA. And he was one of the only few people in the world, four years of college, playing on the great UCLA basketball team. He made four Final Four appearances, almost unheard of. I think they won three national championships. His coach was the great John Wooden. And on the first day with all these All-Americans and some of the bas best basketball players in the country, the Wooden, the greatest coach in college basketball history, first day of practice would hold up a leather round ball and say, gentlemen, 
This is a basketball. These guys thought he lost his mind. The second day, he would hold up a pair of tennis shoes and say, gentlemen, these are a pair of sneakers. On Wednesday, he took a two-hour practice and taught them how to lace the shoes. He went old school. He went back to basics. And on Thursday, fourth day of practice with some of the greatest ball players in the world, they finally got to dribble. And by the end of practice, they started to pass. Half the team wanted to quit. But by Friday, they were finally allowed to shoot a basket. And those who stayed won a couple championships. And guys, I'm telling you, we live in a culture now that's not only not playing by the rules, they don't even want the fundamentals. And when we go back to basics, when we go back to the Bible, when we look at what the Lord told us to do, we'll be champions who are consistent, confident, and compassionate. You know, it's an indictment when Christians are so cocky, waitresses don't even want to work on Sunday. I've been told sometimes they're the worst tippers. They think they're too good to say hi. I heard of a preacher's conference recently with 5,200 pastors at a convention. And on Friday, a friend got on the elevator and looked at the Hispanic elevator operator and just said, hello. And she looked like she had the weight of the world on her shoulders. And then my friend said, has anyone this week in front of all these pastors, has anyone told you the three words, God loves you? And true story, tears began to dance off the elevator floor. And she said, no one all week has told me God loves me. 5,200 preachers who were so professional that they lost the personal touch. And when you get alone in private with God, you can be a microphone for God in public. But until we plug into him, until we go back to basics, we're going to be wannabes, but we're not winning. We're going to be losers, not leading. And the difference between a champ and a chump is you. And I want to encourage you. You know, sometimes the basics are boring. Sometimes we think it's beneath us. But the Boston Celtics were not razzle-dazzle. But boy, they sure won some championships. You know, my son played his first year in basketball this year, and I was so proud of him. The interesting thing is more games are lost, not by half-cooked jumpers that missed or a full-court shot at the buzzer it missed. No, if you miss 10 free throws and two layups, but only lost by five, it wasn't the big things that killed you. You didn't major and the minors. You didn't do the little things big, and you didn't get back to basics. I want to encourage you to get back to the Bible, and you can't lose when you live for the Lord. Never apologize for who you are. Be who God has called you to be, and be boldly. Hi, Nikita Koloff here, and I am excited to announce the first annual Morning Star Men's Conference, August 25th to the 27th. Our theme this year, man up it's time and we have a phenomenal lineup of speakers including nba all-star al wood wwe superstar lex luger lieutenant general jerry boykin david and jason benham the benham brothers chris reed and of course dr rick joiner and let's not forget world-renowned evangelist frank shelton click the link below and sign up early you do not want to miss this event. one question changes everything. 50 years ago, the Jesus People Revival swept America, and this question was everywhere. In June of 1972, 70,000 Jesus people gathered for an evangelistic training called Expo 72. At the candlelight commissioning, the light was so bright outside that people called the fire department. The cotton bowl is on fire. 
We need the fire of revival today. On the 50 year anniversary of Expo, we're picking up where the Jesus people left off for Together 22. We make known our views on just about everything. What will happen when we unite to make Jesus known? Praise the Lord. I just saw my friend Nick Hall, who's hosting that big event this summer in Texas. And uh, we were at the NRB together in Nashville. And Nick is a phenomenal evangelist. He used to be the tour pastor to Winter Jam. And they saw tens of thousands saved. And I said, Nick, I believe in you and I believe in the mission. I'm going to air a couple of those on our TV ministry. First of all, it was 40 years ago that my godmother, Judy Henderson, was at that first big expo for Jesus in 72, near where the Dallas Cowboys played. The backstory is for three weeks in a row on a Thursday, we had Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons come to our house and would knock on our door. And my dad was working three to 11 with the DC police. My mom was young with few babies and she knew not to just let anyone in the house, but we didn't grow up in a Christian home. Three Thursdays in a row, the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons came. And number one, are we allowing cults beat us at our own game? Two, others are doing and going door to door for a lie, what some of us are sitting on the couch and won't do for the truth. And three, people will listen, whoever's talking, and don't let folks who are telling lies be misled. My mom said, if they come over again next Thursday, I'm going to finally invite them in to hear what they have to say. That Saturday night, my mom's best friend, Judy Henderson, my godmother, was in Dallas, Texas, was way in the back like a Woodstock thing in front of 75,000 people. Josh McDowell spoke, and my former boss, Billy Graham, spoke. She heard the glorious gospel and got saved that night at that event 40 years ago. And she came home, hadn't been saved 48 hours, and she came to my house, sat my mom down on the couch on a Tuesday and said, come meet the man. It told me everything about me. And at that time, she wasn't talking about Josh, but she was talking about Jesus. And she led my mom to the Lord. She had been saved a week herself. She didn't know it all. She just knew God is the answer to all of our problems. And true story, two days later, for the fourth Thursday in a row, there was a knock at the door, and it was the Jehovah Witnesses, and praise God, had my godmother not dared and cared to share, I may be the most fired up Jehovah Witness you've ever seen. I may have still been on my way to hell, and none of this would have been a reality. So thank God that I had a godmother who not only kept the faith, share the faith. I want to encourage all my friends to get to Texas and support this generation as they preach the gospel. Maybe you saw the Man Up conference with my friend, eight-time world wrestling champ Nikita Koloff and Lex Luger and General Jerry Boykin and the Benham brothers and UNC All-American that played with Michael Jordan, Al Wood. I have the honor to preach at a two days conference. I want to encourage you to show up at that event. Some of you may ask, well, Frank, we've been enjoying by faith. I've gotten friends from South Africa folks from London, folks from Los Angeles saying they're enjoying by faith and it's humbling. And first of all, I want to thank those who help partner with us. And uh, if you would like to donate, just go right now to frankshelton.com. You can write a check. You can do it by PayPal. We're 501c3, one plants, one waters. The Lord brings the increase. But if you've never trusted Christ, I want to encourage you today, trust Jesus because he's not a good way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. On the road, I'm usually uh, traveling alone. We live by faith, but my beautiful bride is here. My wife, Ruth, usually I'm ruthless, but Billy Graham had a Ruth. I have a Ruth. Would you give my wife a round of applause and I'll preach, amen? Thank you, Matt Brown. Thank you for all of you coming here. And man, we serve a good God, amen? I got one verse, and if I can quote what Elizabeth Taylor told her seventh husband, 
I love you, but I won't keep you long. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 20. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The Bible says that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Dr. Ronnie Floyd last night talked about that the labors are few and the harvest is plenty. And praise God, in this moment, that's still true. But very soon, in the near future, the Lord will split the sky and there will be a moment when that the harvest is past. Now, you and I may be saved, but too many, multiplied millions and billions, are still without saving faith in Christ. If you don't think a decade has value, speak to the person who was shackled for 10 years in a concentration camp. If you don't think one year has value, speak to the student at college that failed the exam only to repeat a semester from now. If you don't think a month has value, speak to the 16-year-old girl who gave birth to a premature baby. If you don't think a day has value, speak to the local editor of your newspaper because a lot can happen in 24 hours. If you don't think a minute has value, speak to the person who last night in the subway of Chicago missed the last train for the evening only to walk home. If you don't think a second has value, speak to the senior citizen that just survived a near fatal automobile accident. And if you don't think one hundredth of a second has value, speak to the silver medalist and the 2012 Olympic Games. My friends in life, we are good at wasting time, but the Bible talks about redeeming the time. And what I want you to see with the help of the Holy Spirit is you can spend $10,000 for a Breitling or Rolex watch. The Rolex watch is expensive, but in my opinion, a terrible piece of time. How you can tell an authentic Rolex and a counterfeit is that the genuine Rolex secondhand never hesitates like every other watch in the world. You can tell the cubic zirconia because the secondhand hesitates. The Rolex is expensive, but it's a terrible form of time. I wish today that I could bring into you an hourglass like the days of our lives because it reminds rich or poor, black or white, believe you or atheist, that eventually time will run out. 7.7 billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, 152,000 people died today. 152,000 died yesterday. And 152,000 will die tomorrow. According to the CDC, 2.8 million people die annually in America alone. From America to Antarctica to Australia, most people have no clue where they will spend eternity. Opposed to sit on the sidelines, we elected to get in the game. Regardless of providing relief during natural disasters, distributing food and clothes to the poor, helping eradicate human sex trafficking nationally and globally, Influencing influencers, motivating world-class athletes, investing in students at public and private school assemblies, ministering to powerful politicians, counseling heads of state, or preaching the gospel at citywide crusades at home, or massive sports stadiums abroad. From coast to coast and around the globe, we exist to reach the lost at any cost. From London, England, Guatemala, the Bahamas, Jamaica, Mexico, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Romania, Paris, Philippines, Brazil, Africa, Tokyo, Pakistan, India, 7.7 .7 billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, Earth is not our final destination. We have two options, a 
heaven or hell, but not both. And hell is too long to be wrong. We're reaching the world one soul at a time. Time is ticking, people are hurting. And our mission is to offer hope to folks on Main Street to Wall Street. From our house to Hollywood. And schoolhouses, church houses, and even the White House. Time is ticking. People are hurting. But help is on the way. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today.